Hi, and uh, it's Bob from Lapcon again at Lapcon. Now we've got Lapcon organizer with me, Ian Nope. Hi, Ian. Hi. Uh, it's a bit of a grandiose title because basically I make my wife do the work, so it's actually Emily Nope, which you probably slap up. But. But so it's, um, Emily's been doing all, all the organizing, but you're yeah, yeah. kind of the face of Lapcon. I'm La indeed the face of Lapcon. My job is to talk to people. So That's I cool. I wander around and I talk to people. Okay. And we, we've had a couple of years' break now. Yes. Uh, from a, a, the long run of fire lab cons, but how is this one going now? Seems to be going quite well. Because of the current situation we've got, we've changed how we run LARPCon. Right. So rather than buying a ticket and coming all weekend and staying, we have different slots. Yeah. And that's, that's sort of good and sort of bad. People are having to get used to buying a ticket online rather than just throwing money at us, yeah. which some people are fine with, some people are not fine with. Yeah. But it's the future, we've got to get used to it. Um, it's meant there's lost, less risk of us getting robbed on the front desk, I suppose. Um, yeah. But because of the slots, it's also meant a difference in tickets and things like that. And we haven't had a year of progression. In LARP, I will always say, um, a, an average LARP game will lose about 10% of its players a year. Not through anything other than, no matter what they do, just people grow older, they get married, they ch the circumstances change in a number of ways, and they can't come to LARP anymore. And that's, that's natural, that's just part of life. And occasionally they come back to LARP later. But what most LARPs do is recruit. So each year you get recruitment to cover that. You get about 10% recruitment. But last year there wasn't recruitment, so it's got a little bit stagnant. But I think we're getting on top of it, and certainly some organisations have reached out to engage with their uh, player base during the times they're not running events and are looking to to attract more people coming to their events. So it's not all doom and gloom, it's just a little bit dark. Yeah, I, think, I think that's absolutely right. It's been, it's been that period, everything just stopped dead. We, I think stagnation is the way to write word for it. I think you find that having a LARP shopping channel shot into action during that time. <laughs> Actually, I did notice that. You did have a shopping channel and you also ran a, a number of sales, cha uh, sales events last year as well. Indeed. Well, last year was different because lockdown had finished at but events couldn't start. We were very conscious that when I go to an event, what I one time I care about is the toilet and how I clean my hands. I know that's not very in character and I should be worrying about the arrows being filled, filled the sky being full, filled with arrows or something. But what I care about is where I go to the toilet and wash my hands. And I assume that a lot of other people think the same. And right now, what people want to do is wash their hands. Right? You can use as much alcohol gel as you like, but they want to wash their hands. And so finding a venue that has a good supply of toilets and showers so people can feel clean yeah. was important. Running outside as well meant that we weren't in an enclosed space. But also last year, because we took advantage of some other events not being able to run to use the dates that would normally be taken up for those to run what we did. And I'm not sure what we're going to do about those this year because for example, Empire is running this year, yeah. so being able to say they're not on this weekend, we know it's free, we know all our traders uh, that come are free, isn't the same. But people liked it, so we might have a go. Yeah, I think, that, I think the, the feedback I got was people were, were liking them. Yeah. So yeah, but uh, you're right, the, the issue is clashing with established labs and trading at labs. Well, yeah, absolutely. We've never really looked to clash with anything. We want to support LARP and boot, or bolster it. Um, and running an event at the same time as that would not happen. It wouldn't be beneficial really for LARP, it would just split the player base, which is an ideal for anyone. Yeah. Um, I had something else I was going to say, but it's going out of my head entirely now, sorry. That's okay, I'll I just, I, I just step things forward a bit. Hopefully then 2022 is a good year, uh, but uh, do you have any thoughts now for LARPCOM 2023 yet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were having a discussion about it downstairs. The reason this year's LARPCon is the LARPCon of Firetop Mountain is it's 40 years since the Warlock of Firetop Mountain was released. And um, I was first introduced to this hobby through uh, my father came home one day from work. He brought my sister the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. He brought me the Citadel, Citadel of Chaos. And I loved those books. And my sister didn't, so I nicked her one. And when I realised it was 40 years since the book had come out, I re re 
I uh, increased my efforts to contact the authors to see if they could come along. Initially, we contacted uh, Steve Jackson because he was a lecturer. He used to be a lecturer at Brunel College, and one of my LARP associates is also a lecturer at Brunel College, and so he had to connect. He had a link. Um, so I'm eternally grateful to you. Think, thanks, Chris. Um, I messaged them. I messaged Steve. And I got an email from Ian Livingstone while while I was playing D and D as it happened. So I'm I were playing it on Zoom and I'm yeah I, I don't care sorry everyone I just got an email from Ian Livingstone <laughs> um, saying that Steve wasn't that well at the moment wouldn't be able to make this event but he probably would and so we followed up and along came Steve and made many people's dreams come true yesterday afternoon last night yeah yeah we did yeah yeah well he signed my book. Yeah. The Dicing with Dragons, which is a book from 1982, which talks about LARP, and it talks about Treasure Trap, and it talks about Killer, and some other things. But it also is one of the first mentions, it's one of the first mentions of LARP, and he does actually call it live action roleplay. Yeah. And so I go and sign it with the word of the front, it's spelled L-A-R-P. Magical, yeah. From the first person to write it, so I don't know what you've got LRP is. Come on, come at me. I've got smoke of fruits with your name on. <laughs> uh, sorry, am I yeah. supposed to be competitive to the world? I'm, I'm, no, I'm, no, no, no. I mean, the great LRP, LRP, LRP did. I don't think it's going anywhere. But well, <laughs> now the LRP awards. I won an LRP award last night. Admittedly, I stole it off somebody else, but I won an LRP award last night. Yeah. Oh, I didn't steal it. We didn't have a combat competition. That's how I got it. You heard or hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, try really hard to make it fair. You know, yeah. having people carping criticism from outside. Ooh, it's like this. Ooh, it's like this. How would you choose to run something in a perfect world? When you say, oh, I bet they just give it to their mates. If that is how you would choose to run your award ceremony, good luck to you. That is not how I choose to run my award ceremony. Please don't think that is. Yeah. No, but, you absolutely. Know, so I'm not ranting at you. No, no, no. No, I... I, I, I I, I'm, I mean, I know you get that criticism, but then again, I've, I've seen the inside of how you judge. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, it's actually very reasonable. <laughs> we do try hard. Uh, the judging, how judging works is the judges are picking a first place, a second place, and a third place from the shortlists in each category. If you you pick someone first, they get five points. If you pick someone second, they get three points. If you pick someone third, they get two points. I can't remember where I stole that system from, but it's not mine. I felt somebody else had been using it for years and it worked, so I was like, well, that'll do. Yeah. And it does mean that, although often one, one winner is a clear, they've got 90% 90, 90 of the first place votes, there are occasions where it's fairly, fairly close in first place, but somebody has got come second enough that they win rather than the winner, as it were, the person with the most first place votes. No, no, that, that makes that makes perfect sense. Uh, so, w w do you know when we'll hear more about the next the next LARPCon, Ian? So, we we are planning our next LARPCon to be the first weekend of March next year. Yeah. Um, you asked earlier about the theme. Yeah. This year is 40 years since the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Yeah. And that is the reason I got into gaming and to playing Dungeons and Dragons and into LARP and to forming having a LARP and making weapons for a living and eventually to LARPCon. So Warlock of Firetop Mountain is why this is happening. Yeah. Uh, so we looking at next year. Next year would be the, the anniversaries. It is 40 years since the publication of The Colour of Magic. So the LARPCon of magic could be a thing. The colour of LARPCon was not a thing because that's a really bad title. And the other thing is, Magic the Gathering was released in 1993, so it's actually 30 years of Magic the Gathering. And because of the nature of Magic, we've got lots of ideas on that as well. Yeah. So we're still thinking. So now we're here, what does everyone think? Would you prefer a, a, a theme of Discworld or Magic the Gathering? That should start a fight. And if you say Magic the Gathering or... If you get too irate, we're just going to think you're in an LRP, so we're on mine. Yeah. Actually, I, 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 I'm going to open that one up to our community, so um, 
write in and tell us. Um, <laughs> Ian, Ian does look at the community, so please write in and tell us which one you prefer. We'd love to see the results from that. <laughs> Indeed. And I think that's all for now, Ian. So I'd just like to say thank you all very much. Uh, so I'd just like to remind you all that. Thank you, but I want to say thank you to Ian for running a really good con. It's been a, it's been a fantastic weekend. And don't forget, it's all Sir Ian Livingstone's fault. <laughs>